Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today, we're coming to you in full 1080p for the first time. Uh, I hope this looks great. Please let me know how it's looking for you. Um, we're also using a new audio chain. We got a new AV setup. We got we got camera two, right? Feeling good about that. And most importantly, we've got Will Johnson. Will, how you doing, man? Oh man, I'm I'm doing great. I just took my you know my morning dose of raw liver, so you know I'm feeling good. <laughs> that's, that's a, that joke's like an onion; it's got layers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, it does. Oh man! All right, I am uh, I am I am very very excited to have you on the show today. But before we talk about why you're here, let's talk a little bit about who you are. So for folks who aren't familiar, can you give us a bit of a background? Yeah, sure. First, I just want to say congratulations on your move. I'm going out on your own solo. Um, Thank you. you know, I was on here like three years ago, like when I was starting in tech and you were fairly new at doing this. So it's kind of cool how, you know, the progress that you made. So congratulations on all of that, man. It's really, really cool to see. Yeah, it was great. Uh, so, um, Will and I got a chance to catch up at Jamstack Conf uh, this year, and it was just, it was great to kind of share stories about how much we've grown. Because I remember I'm, I met you when you were, you were first starting out at, uh, at Egghead. You were doing, um, you were just kind of breaking into tech at that point. And now you're over mm -hmm. at, uh, you're over at Okta, you're working on Auth0, Um You've come so far and and it's been so impressive watching you kind of make your way up the up the ladder in tech. Um, and you know, it's always fun when you meet somebody and then you both get to grow together as you're as you're kind of out and, and yeah. seeing what's good. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been great. And you know, you've been uh, you know, someone I've been watching and you know, you know, trying to emulate and stuff like that. So it's yeah, it's been really, really cool. Um, but for me, uh, I'm Will. I'm a self-taught developer. I was doing mainly factory work for years and uh, just didn't like it. You know, yeah. it, it was boring. I did like the same movement 400 times for 12 hours. Um, so I wanted to like, do something more creative. Um, so I started learning how to code, uh, got notice of Egghead, start working there. And there when I, I met a lot of developer advocates, I didn't even know that this was a thing. Uh, so I met a lot of developer advocates at Egghead and was like, okay, I think I can do this uh, as well. So uh, that's how I ended up here uh, at Off Zero, and I've been doing, um, you know, developer activities, mm -hmm. uh, advocate activity. I'm I've been speaking at conferences, speaking at company events, doing YouTube videos. It's been uh, a really fun and exciting ride, and um, can't wait to see, you know, what what else gets done and what else gets accomplished. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, yeah. So, so. You have made the move into DevRel. Um, you've been you've been doing a great job at it, and we are now uh, we're actually going to talk about your your day job today. We're going to talk about Auth0 uh, and specifically Auth0 Actions. So let's talk a little bit about what that is. Uh, actually, hold on, I just saw a comment. Uh, ben, yes, the captions now go into the Twitch player. I am so ha I've wanted this to be true forever. Um, it is, it is so exciting to me that this is now a thing. And so the way that this works is there is a, a plugin called, um, it's like OBS stream text, something, something. So I work with white coat captioning that, um, so Ashley's here today and we have live human captions on the show. And the problem with live human captions is that there's like a very specific format for sending closed captioning into a live broadcast and I don't know how to do it, and OBS is written in C. <laughs> so like, I have no idea how to, how to make this work. Um, but so there is a, a plugin, I can't remember who originally built it, but then Liz Fong Jones updated it for OBS 28, so that now I can run a little node script on my computer that, that reads the, uh, the stream text event that, that White Coat is sending to, and pipes that directly into, into Twitch, into the live stream as, as a closed caption channel. So you've got that CC toggle button now if you wanna follow along with, uh, with closed captions, and I'm so excited, because that means now I don't have to do the whole like embed on the homepage and send people to the homepage to look at the captions and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, so big improvements all around, uh, real excited about that. 
But so, okay, so Will, let's talk about uh, let's talk about Auth zero in the abstract first. So, um, Auth zero is a is a I guess not really a startup anymore. Um, but they've been in the game for years, and what I remember Auth zero being good at, like when I've used it, is I could put a like login to my website. And the thing that I was always excited about is that I could use third-party services. So log in with Google, log in with Twitter, log in with with whatever else, right? Um, I think a lot has changed since I was deep in Auth0. So can you give us a bit of an overview about what the company is, what it does? Uh, sure. So um, for Auth0, I mean, you know, essentially it handles authentication and authorization for you. So authentication is being able to log in you never have to build another form again, right? You don't have to worry about, you know, OAuth flows and stuff like that. Like you, the the nitty gritty of handling authentication mm -hmm. um, is handled by us. We take away that for you. Um, as far as like, same with authorization, you, you know, roles and access and things like that. You don't have to worry about those things. Um, you hook up Auth0 to your account and we kind of, uh, or to your application and then those things getting uh, taken care of. and and like you said, yeah, it has definitely grown and uh, there's a lot more to it, you know, uh, outside of that. Like we help you like protect your accounts. We do multi-factor authentication, uh, the, the whole magic link thing. Like it goes like on and on. Like if it has to do with you logging into your application, um, we have a solution for you that's fairly, fairly easy. Or even my favorite thing, biometrics, right? Like mm. biometrics that on zero is one click of a button to, to set that up and you know, you got users logging in with their their face or fingerprint, or if they have a Yubi key or something. Yeah, man, I we just had uh, we just had Joyce Park on the show to talk about the the FIDO two and web auth and stuff, and um, that is that's the future I want, right? Is like I I can just you know touch the button instead of ever having to remember a password or or open up my password manager. Um, I just hit yeah. the thing, and it's like yeah, this is your computer, and and that's your finger, so let's go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know a... if you've seen that uh, tweet that people have where it's like the future and it's like flying cars and stuff like that. And it'll be like <laughs> society if we did something. Yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. I feel society if we didn't have to use passwords. Like that's how the future is. Yes, I, uh, I definitely think passwords are a, a constant source of pain. Um, and I am very, very happy that I no longer need to deal with them in certain cases. Um, I'm trying to find a link to this uh, this stream text repo real quick, just to make sure that it shows up in the notes. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about two things. Let's start with actions. Mm -hmm. So, what are Auth0 actions at a at a high level? Okay, so usually when I'm talking about actions, I like to use a uh, an analogy, right? So mm -hmm. let's say that you're the owner of a Mexican restaurant, right? You sell Mexican food, quesadillas, tacos, enchiladas, right? Fajitas, right? Hey, you're making me hungry. And then, <laughs> I mean, you got the, the pizza shirt on, so you make true. It's my hungry, fault, yeah. right? <laughs> but so let's say that restaurant gets super popular say that your, your people who come to the store say you know what what if y'all made pizza but not like mexican pizza like straight up pizza right so you have a few different options so you want to take care of your customers and give them what they need right you have a few different options you can you know buy a pizza oven and start making pizza there train your employees on how to make pizza you could partner with a popular pizza company in your in your area and be able to have them you know sell their pizza there right um or you could you know buy some pre-made pre-packaged pizza from target you know and put that in your store and, and sell it to people so you have different options for able to satisfy your customers so the same thing with actions right if someone says you know hey i want to um you know be able to verify with my id or i want to have voice recognition to log in or you know so, something along those lines with actions it allows you to add those things to your application mm -hmm. and you have different options right it's not like um it's only one way to do it and you don't have to like really mess with your core 
code base, you can add like these extra things um, and still serve your customers without it being like a super headache and a lot of lead work on your on your end. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. So so then what I'm able to do is so if I'm if I'm setting up an app in Auth0, I am going to be, for example, uh, I have a dashboard for my app and I'm going to have people log in and I want them to see their own data. And so I need some kind of authentication provider. So I'm going to add Auth0 on top. They will handle the user accounts mm -hmm. and they'll make sure that they have permissions to see the things that I'm showing them and, and all those sorts of things. What you're saying is that with actions, I can extend what happens as part of the, the login or the authentication process or is, is there... Mm -hmm. Um, is it bigger than that? Am I, am I oversimplifying? Um, I wouldn't say you're oversimplifying, but yeah, that, that, um, is that you can extend. So basically with the actions and, and we'll see when we, um, uh, log in, you'll have like different trigger ports, trigger points in our authentication flow mm -hmm. that you can interrupt, um, and have an action, uh, run. So you'd be able to, so for example, like logging in is one. Um, then there's pre-user registration. So that's like before a user gets into the database, you might want to um, customize their profile or something. You would use pre-registration, post-registration, you know, after they, you know, are saved to the database and register, you might want to use that to send a welcome email or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Post-change password, um, send phone message. So there's like different points in that flow from, from logging in that we can interrupt and have that action run. Got it. That's super cool. So so I'm kind of imagining um, if somebody changes their password, then I might want to run an action that goes through every surface of the app and make sure to, to delete the cookies so that anybody who's already logged in gets removed, right? Or, you know, so, or like something, something like I want to clear the offline data and make sure that they get a fresh copy of the data now that they've, they've changed the the thing. So something that wouldn't really be built into Auth0, but that's very tied to like the experience of a logged in user in my app. Um, yeah, exactly. Or even just things like audit logging, right? Like I, I might want to send a, a log to whatever I'm using for, for log tracking. I'm going to send a, send an event to, um, honeycomb or or sentry or whatever my tool is so that i can i can just say like hey this is how often somebody like resets their password um and yeah that could exactly be, that yeah so i i, I mean uh, you know i'm, I'm kind of probably coming up with contrived examples that you could solve in other ways but it's it's very it's cool when when you see a system provide hooks because you know like you said it's it's very difficult for a company to just anticipate every single way that somebody might want to use the tool. Um, so instead allowing extension points and letting somebody say, all right, I'm going to use your tool for what your tool is great at. You, you have your team focus on being the best in the world at that thing that I need. And then when I have something custom, I'm not harassing your sales team saying like, Hey, build us this custom feature. Instead, I can just use the extension point and build out my little bit of custom code. And then yeah. I move on with my day. I, I really like that model of, of uh, whatever it is, uh, SaaS, you know, where, where you're not, you're not like stuck in the um, we'll build it or you don't get it model from, from the companies yeah. that you work with. <laughs> uh, I, I very much like it when they, you know, certain things I want them to build for me, but a lot of things I know I just have a weird edge case because I'm doing something that was, the yeah. tool wasn't built for. I am like, I'm very guilty of constantly holding tools wrong and like trying to twist it to do something that it was never built to do. And so if I get the keys and I can go make my own mess, then I can also, you know, then I can manage my own mess. I don't have to dump that on you and say like, Hey, can you build this custom API endpoint for me so that I can do something silly? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the cool part about actions. Like even when I'm out, like talking to people, you know, who use them and stuff, you know, it usually is like a specific, you know, edge case that um, that they, they, they're able to build themselves uh, and they have access to those points so they don't have to go do a whole bunch of stuff in their own code. Like for one example, um, someone would, if they like clicked a certain thing in their app, um, like during sign up, they would send them to a CRM to like put them mm. into an email funnel using like Zapier. Um, and that's not something everybody would need, but it was because they had actions, they were able to take care of that 
you know, on their own. And there's also like options. There's a marketplace for actions. So you mm. can just kind of click and add things that are already pre-made. So you don't have to always write your own code. Yeah. Um, and, you know, as time goes on, they want people to be able to, if they do make a custom action that solves a problem, they can put it on the marketplace themselves and have other people um, have access to it. That's like future down the line, but that's kind of um, like the, the direction that it's going. Yeah, that's cool too, because what it what I'm hearing off that is is it solves a, another problem that I've seen, which is a lot of companies end up reaching for Zapier or If This Then That or other type of kind of workflow chain things that are just event-driven pipelines. And in a lot of cases, you you are happy to bring one of those in. They're excellent tools. They're very like utility tool types of, of applications. But in the case of like, okay, we're a brand new company, we're setting everything up, and the only thing that we need this workflow automation with is Auth0. I don't want tool sprawl yet, right? I, I would very much prefer to be able to put the serverless function into Auth0 than to have to have whatever my stack is and Auth0, and now I'm standing up a Zapier account, and you know, so now we've got lots of credentials to manage. We've got lots of workflows. People have to remember where those things are. It probably turns into something that we're paying for. So now we're paying for Auth0 and paying for Zapier. So it just got more expensive. Whereas we could not use Zapier yet. We're not there yet. Come back over and put it all in Auth0. So now it's one account, one one centralized place to manage this whole flow. So less context, less uh, less challenging to document, less likely to to get out of sync or or kind of age out on you over time. Um, so that's a, that's like, that's pretty compelling, especially when it comes to like identity code, because it, it tends to be such a, like no two apps tend to do identity exactly the same. There's always something that you need to do. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and like you mentioned your CRM, that's also huge. When somebody logs in, if they perform certain actions, maybe you want to tell HubSpot that like, hey, they've they've just like explored this new area of the product. Let's send them an onboarding sequence and teach them how it works. Or like, hey, they, mm -hmm. they haven't tried this thing yet. Um, if they've logged in five times and haven't looked at this page, maybe we should give them a nudge that says like, look at this section of the, the app because this is where a lot of the value is and it looks like you haven't discovered it yet. Um, so there's there's so many things that you would do there's no way that Auth0 could build that. Like how how yeah. would you how would you as a company build that out? Um, and so then the the other way that it goes is the company goes, oh well, our auth our auth requirements are so complex that we need to build it in house. And then you're down this other whole rabbit hole of managing like the security data of like all this yeah. you know the, all this PII all there's GDPR problems. There's all this stuff that's happening. Um, because now you are responsible for all that data. So it, it really does get tricky. Um, so again, it's, it's about finding that right balance, but I love the idea that you can just add the extensions you need as the customizations that you need, um, and let auth zero be great at, at auth and identity. Um, let your stack be good at being the stack that you built. And then you just have these little bits of glue code that let you do the, the custom stuff that you want to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, Corey's in the chat saying, and then companies go down the wrong <laughs> rabbit hole. 100% yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So, Will, is there anything else that, that you want to say about actions before we flip over and start building one? No, I think, I, honestly, I think the best way to see how cool actions is, is to make one. Let's do it. All right. I'm going to flip us over into the pair programming view. Here we go. Oh, let me get this out of the way because that's going to be disconcerting to look at. Um, and then we're going to be here. All right. So we are uh, we are looking at the home page. Uh, if you don't want to watch the the closed captions in the the closed caption viewer, because look at it, look at it go. Wait, turn on. There you go. Look, <laughs> there they are. That's amazing. Um, but so Ashley is here from White Coat Captioning today, uh, putting all this together. Thank you so much, Ashley, for being here. And that is made possible through the support of our sponsors. We've got Netlify, NX, and New Relic all kicking in to make the show more accessible to more people, which I very much appreciate. Um, we are talking to Will today. Uh, Will, what's the right place to, to send people? Is Twitter still the right place? Yeah, Twitter's the, the, the best place. What just happened? I guess we- Is that a strip kit? 
I do have script kit somewhere. I think that was Alfred. Oh, okay. I do like script kit. Um, script kit is, let's see. I have, uh, you go over here. There it is. Here's a little, um, or no, that's not it. That's, that's the old one. That's before it was script kit. That was when John was still just kind of script kit there. This is a, a fun little thing for automating on your local computer. Uh, all right. So we've, um, we've talked about, we've talked about you, we've talked about John Lindquist, and now I'm ready to talk about Auth0. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if I go Let's to Auth0.com, this is the, the tool that we're using today. Um, where, where should I start first? Like, what's the first thing we should do? Uh, if you already have an account, we should just log in. So we're going to create a new application, and I'm going to have you download a sample app. Okay. Okay. Searching for happy download uh, Okay. Uh, Siri wasn't <laughs> talking to you. <laughs> so helpful. It was loud. <laughs> All right. Let's see what's okay, in here. I have not used my Auth0 account in a minute. Um, okay, so I'm ready. All right, yeah, click on applications and then applications when that drops down uh, and then create create application in the okay. upper right. So since this is going to be React, yep, yeah, put a name. All right, uh, single page web application since it's going to be uh, React that click create. Yep, yep. Okay. All right, uh, and then for there, click on React. All right, so I'm gonna have you download a sample app, and basically the sample app is already configured with Auth0, because um, that's not really what we're you know trying to show today. Um, so I sent a, a message to you. You can just copy that and, and clone the repo. Okay. Gotta figure out where I am here. Let's go to. This one, that's where I need to be. All right, so I'm gonna cut, head over into my terminal, which is in the wrong window. That's what we need. All right, so I'm gonna uh, clone and we're gonna say LWJ auth zero actions is gonna be the name of this. Okay. Okay, so we have a little bit of code here. Um, sample one, mm -hmm. and all right. So uh, should I just fire this up, or uh, you should probably do an npm install? Okay, and I want to do that in the, from in the, the sample O one. Okay. All right, and then um, go to the the uh, authconfig.json sample. You can either make a copy of it or just delete the sample at the end of the file name. Okay. All right, so um, then we'll go we'll go back to the app auth zero dashboard. And go to settings. All right, and then copy the domain and then paste that there and the client ID as well. All right, so I am collapse this. We're going to copy the domain and that goes in here. I'm going to copy the yeah, client and that's like ID. Your, right, and this is how we connect this application to your um, Off Zero account. Mm -hmm. um, and then delete audience because we're not, you know, using an API or anything. So you okay. won't need audience there at the end. All right. So that's set up and I believe everything is installed. So I should be able to just start it. Uh, not yet. One okay. more thing we need to do uh, on the settings page. Uh, scroll down. Uh, and then for allowed callback URLs, and, this is three thousand. Um, right? Allow 
Yeah, localhost 3000. And set okay. that for a callback URL, allow URL, and allow web origins. And so for the people who don't know like what these things mean, the um, the allow callback URL, that's the URL. So basically, for people who don't know, when you sign up with, uh, or when you have an account with Auth0 and you put it to your application, when you click login, you actually get redirected to Auth0 to actually handle the login process. So as I said earlier, you don't build a form or anything like that will take you to an off zero provided login page um, that you can customize and you know if you want and things like that um, but then after you log in there and that user is authenticated we want to know where do you want to redirect this user back to um, mm -hmm. so of course for this we're going to use local 3000 but that url is going to be different when um, you're using a production application um, and then the same thing with allow logout url where do you want them to go uh when they log out right what page you want them to show up on and allow web origins is basically where is this uh call coming from mm -hmm. uh because you're making the call to the off zero endpoint uh from the front end uh you want to allow that url to make that call so you won't have like course errors and stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah and so this right, is allowing then, us uh, to um the, you know this is the, just a security thing like we don't want people setting up their own websites and trying to trying to get into our stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly um, all right and then all right. make sure you scroll down and save those i think i did saved okay, okay. and right. now i can uh run dev or yeah you can run the uh or you can put npm run start or you know whatever you're comfortable for that i'll do i'll do the dev for now all right. let's see how it goes um what is this? I'm going to figure out what that is later. For now, we're going to grab this. I'm going to come over here, open up a new tab, and... All right. So, yeah, this is like a sample project that's already configured with Auth0. So, if you hit login... Okay. This is the off zero universal login. Um, then yeah, you can sign in with uh What have I done? Why are we on Gatsby stuff? No, that it's not it's just uh that's oh, just the um in. you probably yeah, sign up you probably logged in with uh something that's associated with Gatsby at some point, uh, maybe you one know of your old think, accounts. You know what I think is happening is uh I bet this is an account. Hmm, how do I make this not use because it's trying to it's trying to relocate or re redirect to the wrong place. Mm. All right, what are you doing? Why okay, so I configured this here. That's the right one. Yeah. So why the heck is it going to the Gatsby stuff. Oh, here's a whole bunch of mess happening. Crap. Okay, so I'm I need to do uh can I set up like a new Yeah, org? you can probably create a new tenant. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go to the the upper right where it's let's see. I'm trying to look at both screen. The upper right uh where it says J Link Stores. Yeah. Uh, upper left, my bad. Oh, here. All right, and then create. Uh, if you, see if you have another tenant first, maybe. maybe it you looks have like I one. don't. Switch tenant. I have a learn with Jason one. Perfect. Okay, let's get in here, and we'll just try this whole thing again, um, because I think, yeah, I think I had some stuff uh, set up for Gatsby that I need to get away from. So go to applications. Here we go, and we're gonna do one of these. Try it again. Yep. Single page, create. We already cloned the app, so I'm going to go to settings. And in here, for callback URLs, I have these. I'm going to save. And then I need to go get and then, this uh, one. Yeah. And this one. All right, so 
That probably needs to stop and restart. And I'm going to come back over to here, go back to 3000. I'm going to try logging in again. Hey, now it's not showing me Gatsby stuff. And I want to yeah. sign up. I can continue with Google. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Uh, secure my account. Can I skip this? No. So I'm going to pull this off screen. No. My phone number in. <laughs> Uh, it's got to text me a code. Give me just a second. Hello? Come on. Two oh nine one three three. Live is always fun. <laughs> All right. So now we've got, uh, now that I've put in my, my phone details, I've got the mm -hmm. accept, so it's going to get access to my profile and email. Good. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. We're going to accept. All right. And then you log in and got a little like profile page you can visit. Um, and then the information here is from when you authenticate with Auth0, they give mm -hmm. you a, or they issue an a ID token. So this is the information that's um, in the ID token right here. Yeah. So your name, your, your family name. Linkstorf, first of his name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, so now we're logged in, right? We've got this. We've got this mm -hmm. thing set up, um, and it looks like for whatever reason Google doesn't want to share my my image, but that's fine. Um, we all know what I look like, and so <laughs> then what should all we right. do so next? First all right, well, first, let's go ahead and uh, log you out uh, on, the pro yeah, on that profile uh, page. So now we can get started with some action. So now we got an Auth0 account set up, got an application set up. Now let's uh, write an action. So uh, let's go back to the dashboard uh, and click on, on the left, Actions, and then click on Library. Okay. Um, so this here will show like all of your actions if you made any already, but since we have it, we want to click build custom on the upper right. Okay. All right. Then let's say, uh, log in, let's say welcome video, right? So this is, this is what I want to have to do. So I guess to explain what we're doing here is when we, when our users log in, we're going to redirect them to a video that I want them to watch, like a welcome video, mm. like welcome to the site, you know, so glad to have you here. Just like a, a video to get them excited about using uh, our product, right? Um, so it'll be the login and post login trigger and keep the runtime at uh, node 16. Okay. Uh, and then click create. All right, so this here will bring you to the actions editor. So all the code you write for actions is uh, held here uh, on the website, so you don't have to, like I said, open up your code. You can come in and make these changes, you know, fairly quickly. Um, so there, when you, there's a function already there, the on execute post login function, um, it's a synchronous, and it takes in an event uh, object and an API object. The event object it, uh, kind of talks about um, contextual information about the particular user that's logging in. Mm -hmm. um, and then the API object provides methods that you can use to change the behavior of the uh, the flow that you're using. Gotcha. Um, so for this one, so for this, we're going to use a redirect since we want them to um, go somewhere else and watch a video first. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Uh, and just to go over some more things about the editor, um, on the right hand side, right there's like a play button. Um, Left man, I'm I'm left-handed, so it's like I always get those things backwards. So no left-hand side, <laughs> left-hand side, uh, there's a play button, so that's so you can go to actually like test out the actions before you uh, deploy them, and you can like click that, and I guess like get a look at it or whatever. 
And it also lets you see what's all available in the event object too. So I think that's pretty oh, cool. Oh, that's really handy. Okay. And and I can do I get to customize this too if I want to? No, I it's do. I mean, yeah, you can put in like different values. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's slick. So that's <laughs> that's wonderful because then I can go in and mess around in here and get this yeah. all kind of, you know, fixed up. That's uh that's pretty great. Okay. Cool. All right. And then a uh, bunch there, here. we the, got the geo data. Button. We got um here's the user data. That's slick. This is really slick. Okay, great. Yeah, it's a it's a ton of information in there. Like it's it, it gives you a lot of power, uh, you know, to be able to customize what, what you're doing is really, really cool. Awesome. Okay. All right. So we are, uh, we are getting access to this event. That's what we want. Um, and I want to, you said redirect. So what we want to do is, uh, on successful login, which I guess if it's post login, every login that gets here is, is successful, right? Yeah. Okay. So we don't actually even need to check if it's on successful. We can just say redirect the, the newly logged in user to a welcome video. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, uh, again, just to get for the tour on the left hand side, there's like the key. And then you can use that to store like secrets if you need like API mm. keys from like a third party, like Twilio or Stripe or something like that, you can store the secrets there. Um, we're not gonna get into that today just cause I want to keep it like light and easy as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the other, the bottom one, the box icon, uh, that one is where you can store or you can add NPM packages, right? Oh, so you can add- Oh, slick. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's really dope. And is this just anything off of NPM? Yep, yep. Nice. Really nice. Yeah. Well, All right. Cool. So, so those are kind of the tour. Uh, go ahead. I was just going to say, it, it, like, so this looks like it gives you the full toolbox. This is everything that we could need. Um, so I'm, I'm ready. Let's, let's put one of these together. All right. So we're going to do a first simple action. So we're going to do... Uh, a redirect. So we're going to use the API object. That's how you redirect. Um, so you would type in uh, inside the function, of course, API dot redirect dot send user to. Okay. And then that'll be, uh, you know, put, yeah, send user to, and then I'll send you the URL in the chat. See, copy the link here. We're gonna send the user to here. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And all right. And then so so that'll be it. This is all we need to do uh, to do the redirect. Uh, so click deploy in the upper right hand corner. Okay. All right. So you could click up there, but I'm gonna have you go through like through the menu. So on the left hand side where it says actions. Click on flows. Okay. And we're gonna do the login flow. And those are these different trigger points that you have. All right, so this is the visualizer. This is a drag and drop. This is where you can actually add the actions to your flow. So oh. you go to custom, drag welcome video in between the user logging in and the token being issued. Uh, click apply. Click apply, okay. Uh-huh. So this should have it live on the application. So it should be able to go to log in the application and get that uh, welcome video. All right, okay. All right, let's give this a shot. So back here, we are not logged in. So I'm going to go to do my login, continue with Google. <laughs> got got knew it was coming 
did it anyways. <laughs> How'd you know it was coming? I just, you, you, you get the URL, you know, it's a YouTube. You're like, Oh, I'm getting got it. <laughs> Something's going to happen. <laughs> oh. <sighs> All right. Well, okay. But this is great. So this, this did the thing that we wanted it to do. And if I open this up here, so this did, it redirected us entirely. So if I go back, okay, so, so that did what we wanted. Go away. Leave me alone, Rick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what it did though, that is, is interesting is it looks like it broke my login because I'm not actually logged in after having gotten redirected. Correct. Yeah. Now, I mean, of course I did this for fun, but usually if you're doing like a redirect, um, you want them to do something. And then once that thing is done, then you can come back. Uh, you can, uh, what you'll do is you'll send, um, you'll send the user back. So on your actual application, right? You would send the user to the, uh, a continue endpoint from off zero. Mm -hmm. And then that would continue the login. But just for this like little joke, no, it, it doesn't, uh, Gotcha, log you gotcha, and you gotcha. have to go through that whole that whole process yeah no that's i mean that's really cool so so we have the ability to do things like and and so knowing that this is possible i could add some logic in here and i could say go into my um my custom flow here i'm going to open this up and then i could do something like you know if the event dot user dot uh email is Will Johnson, I'm just making up a, an email here. Now it's only your problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can, you can. <laughs> okay, no, I'm, I'm into it. I like, I, I think I, I'm starting to see very quickly how, how much this can do where, you know, we can check things like, um, like I, the first thing that I think about is, is things that I know we would get asked to do if we were in a, like a product capacity, right? So we're building the product and the marketing team, the sales team, they want to know who's signing up for the service. So we can check for, um, you know, which domains are being used for registration and like in the CRM in Salesforce or HubSpot or whatever, we can add people to a group that's like, you know, uh, ideal customer profiles, um, if they, if they log in or register with, with one of those emails, uh, I can see wanting to do things like as somebody is, is moving through the app, if they are, uh, I actually kind of want to look at, at what the options here. So pre-user registration, post-registration, if they, they change a password, like there's a lot going on here that, that, um, gives me the opportunity to do a decent amount as we, as we go. Um, so what, yeah, what else, what else do you want to look at today? All right, cool. Uh, first of all, let's go back to the flow and then the login and let's, uh, take that, uh, action off first. Okay. So let's click it. Yeah. I wish it was able to drive back and just hit remove and then click apply. Cause I always forget to click apply and wonder <laughs> why it's still doing what I don't want it to do. All right. Um, Oh, now it's going to do the thing again. Okay. Let's not do that again. Perfect. Okay. So we're in. It's working. Yep. All right. All right. So the next thing that we're going to try to do is, so on the application, um on that profile page we uh we had the information from the um id token uh, on the actual application like the the app itself but I, i'm on the wrong screen so yeah okay yeah i, I thought you <laughs> i was so delayed you was like on completely something else <laughs> so i was like <laughs> anyway so yeah so on the profile page uh we had the information from this id token mm -hmm. and so this is what you can use to like customized user's profile, um, you know, maybe have them a particular welcome message or something like that. You can do that with the ID token. So next thing we're going to do is add some information 
to this um, ID token, right? Okay. So that's the, but we're gonna do this in two steps. We're gonna create an action on sign up. So you might wanna do a, a new account for this. Um, okay. Do an action on sign up that um, adds some user metadata to the user's profile. And the user metadata is gets stored on off zero. And then we're gonna make another action that takes that metadata uh, gotcha. and displays it and adds it to the ID token as a custom claim, which is um, just the information about the the user that we can add. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, so the first thing we want to do, <laughs> Raphael is saying I got serious after the video. Uh, no, I'm just really serious about building good auth flows. Um, okay. So we're, <laughs> we're going to go in here on, and we're going to build one and you said it's going to be on post user registration. Uh, let me check notes, uh, pre user registration. So we want this yeah before the user gets saved to the database because we do post then the user is oh, already oh, there I and got we it. Okay. edit their data. So, okay. So, so then for my mental framing, that is, that's not before they have hit. Well, actually, of course it's not. Um, it's not before they've hit the button. It's after they've hit register, but before it's saved to the auth zero database is pre user mm -hmm. registration. And, uh, and then after it's saved yeah. to the database is post user registration. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So what we're doing is bef after they, they register, but before it gets saved in auth zero, we are going to modify their user object. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to add some custom user fields. All right. And this is yeah. all good. Uh huh. Okay. So in we go and I'm ready. All right. So for this one still, like I'm just trying to keep it simple. Um, so it's API dot user dot set user metadata. Um, and then inside of there, uh, it takes the first, it, it takes a string, which will be the name of the metadata. So for this one, we're going to put our taco sandwiches. <laughs> Does it, it, and I assume it needs to be like a key or can it be anything? Uh, it just could be a string. I usually do the the underscore thing though. I guess. Just it's easier for me to read. Snake case is definitely, um, is is nice like this. And I'm not gonna give you an option to, uh, to tell me what it is. <laughs> well, in my notes, I had it as yes, but true, true can also uh, work. So yeah, but yeah, also the value can be um, anything for like the value of the claim. It can be any value, but the name has to be a string. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, so let me make sure I'm on your right screen. All right, so click deploy on the upper right. Deployed. All right, and then click add to flow on the right, right before it go away. Oh, add to flow. Oh, sick. Yeah. All right, well, that, yeah, that's add that, handy. And then super. Yeah, the, the team who works on Actions has, has really put some work in to make it like super developer friendly. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's uh, sign up a new user. Okay, so we're going to log out. We're going to sign up. I'm going to use a different email this time. Uh, I don't think it works. When, I think it has to have a username and password for the oh, I for got changing you. the metadata. Okay, I can do that. Um, let's go back. Localhost 3000. Okay, so we're going to log in. No, go away. How do I make yeah, it? Yeah, still going to wait for that because that's what it's connected to at the moment. Okay. Um, well, I'll log in and log out, I guess. <laughs> See you. Six six two five seven six. Okay. Uh, do one of these. Do one of those. Decline. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now I can go out to localhost three thousand again. We can log in. I'm fine. Okay. Then we're gonna sign out. Sign up. 
and put in an email address. Let's do uh, one of these and then we'll make up a password for it. Okay. We have continued. Oh, for goodness sake. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you must have that set up in your that. tenant for the... Uh... Yeah. Let's see here. Four, three, seven, two, thirty. Okay, so now we're back here. It wants to give the profile an email. We're good. I'm going to hit accept. And All we right. have done it. And if I go to my profile. Well, um, no, see, it, it's not there yet, oh. right? That's the, that's the, uh, just the user metadata um, that we set. This is the, the ID token that gets issued when you log in. Got so um, we're going to make another action to add it here. Gotcha. Um, so go to the, yeah, go to user management on the left. And then users. And then the user that you just set up. And then scroll down. All right, so now we in the user metadata, it does say that our taco sandwiches is set to true, which is, mm -hmm. you know, something I can agree with. So this user, since they, like, this was a real application, you know, it probably wouldn't be our taco sandwich is true, but it'd be something that like a preference that you would want them to set up uh, or select, like, you know, do you prefer the light mode or something? Um, and then you would store that here in the metadata and then you can put it in the ID token and then allow that to show up, you know, on their profile when they log in and things like that. Got it. Um, cool. All right. So, and for this site, right, if they, say that the answer is true, we might, you know, send them a, you know, 10% off coupon. If they false, you know, they get charged mm. 10% more. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The true believer discount, I believe is, uh, is the right call. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so for, for us to do this, then I can go into a flow and, and we want this to be after somebody logs in, right? We're going to check their metadata and then change something in the token that comes back? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, cool. So I can I can go into my library and we'll build another custom one. And this is going to be, um, let's see, update based on metadata. Taco metadata. <laughs> it's going to be on login. Uh, yep. Good. Keep it in node 16. And then in here, I think I get, so if I do like an event.user.metadata, user metadata dot um, R, right? Is this, okay, so I think we'd probably need to do it like this. Our taco sandwiches, is this how we did it? Um, yeah, so here's what, I, here's what I was gonna, well, first, uh, well, I guess, okay, here's the first thing we'll do. I was going to, like, just destruct our taco sandwiches out of user metadata. Oh, I gotcha. Okay, we can do that. So we'll do a const our taco sandwiches. Okay. Yep, an event uh, user. You ain't used this before? The fact that you knew exactly what to type. So it's got, uh, it's got autocomplete right oh, so yeah. i can just yeah, i can just I, see what's happening and so i just kind of yeah. made some guesses right i can i can go around and then i started typing meta and it showed me these two so uh this is like the magic of of typescript is it just makes that piece i i i kind of don't care about typescript for actual compilers i i i, I but i can't not use it now that i know that autocomplete works like it's for me it's all about the ide autocomplete Mm hmm Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I for because I'm like looking at you know a different screen, but I'm like he knows already knows what to do. But yeah, it does. <laughs> the <laughs> the actions editor does have the uh the autocomplete makes that mm -hmm. a lot easier. In fact, like I'm working on a, a egghead course, and I don't know if you've seen my about actions, and I don't know if you've seen my tweet about I was like talking plus coding plus recording is so hard. Mm -hmm. Um. 
so having the autocomplete in actions made the recording process a lot better. One hundred percent. I mean, it just it feels like <laughs> such a game changer because I used to spend so much time. Uh, I would start typing. And then I would forget what the thing was called. So I'd flip over to the docs and then you find the property name and then you got to flip back into your code and then you, you write that piece. And it was just those little like three second loops just add up to make it so, um, so frustrating in, in small innocuous ways, right? Like it's not that big of a deal, but it adds up, it makes you a little bit slower. It's a little bit more frustrating. So just those, those tiny, uh, convenience methods are, are so, so critical for me in keeping me in the headspace of what I'm building. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I agree. It's, it's been very, very helpful. And yeah, it's like, um, you know, people, it's like people, when they look at TypeScript and they go, Hey, I'm no TypeScript expert and or zealot, but I can definitely see like the benefit, right? People think that it slows you down, but it really speeds you up in a lot of ways too. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, like, like every tool, there's, there's a, uh, a point of diminishing returns on it. So, you know, you're, you're going for what's going to make me more productive, not a hundred percent score. Right. <laughs> I think it's like, it's testing, yeah, yeah. it's TypeScript. It's all these things. Like if you're, if you're just a completionist about it, then you're setting yourself up for, for I would say a pretty bad time because you're going to end up spending a bunch of time like really fiddling with the, the edges that don't matter instead of just getting the major benefit, which is the like enough tests, enough TypeScript so that people can very confidently and quickly move around your code base and, and work with it. That's that's the whole game. That's a, a big game changer. Um, yeah, for sure. All right. So I've got my tacos and I'm ready to do a thing. What what should I do next here? All right. So the next thing I want you to create a variable called namespace, um, and then set it to a string of, uh, I guess lwj.dev. Um, like, like that. And then the reason why we're doing this is because so the ID token that gets issued is a JWT, mm -hmm. and so like the values in there are called claims. Right. And you can, when you're making a custom claim, because that's pretty much what we're doing here, we're making a custom claim to add to the ID token. Um, you can have namespace claims, which is basically like a unique identifier for the claim, or you can mm. have non namespace claims, which is then you can just put, you know, our taco sandwiches or whatever. Um, we support both uh, for our ID tokens, we support both uh, cases, but we recommend that you use namespace. That's because it'll be completely unique. It does have to be in like a URI format, so mm -hmm. um, um, it needs the uh, the HTTPS and the slashes oh. too. Um, so it has to be like in that name format, but it helps with like naming collisions. And so any another token may not have that same claim name. It just uh, gotcha. if it's a unique URL uh, that you're using for the namespace and it doesn't have to point anywhere that could completely be a dead url that leads nowhere but we just need it for the naming it won't be called or anything like that gotcha i understand yeah okay cool so i've got uh i've got a namespace and now i've got a, a metadata piece and we want to add a custom claim so what's the claim that we want to add to our, our user token here uh so to do that uh then probably go down a couple lines um, and then we'll do we'll do an if statement, and we'll put if event dot authorization. So um, if the event is an authorization event that this user is trying to do, and then we will go to API dot, or we will type in API dot ID token dot set custom claim. And, and then is the so key we'll put in the namespace? name. Uh, yeah, so we'll do a, a, a template literal because it has to be a string. And then inside of the parentheses are the curly brackets. We'll put namespace and then slash uh, our taco sandwiches. Like that? Yeah. And then, yeah, exactly. Pass in the our taco sandwiches as well. So Got it. 
Okay, I can so get into make this. Make sure that we make sure that we hit deploy. That should uh, save the action. Deployed, and now we want to add it to a flow. Uh huh. Here. Yep. Okay. Click apply. All right. So then when we go back this way, what we should see is if I, oh no, you know what I did? You're probably going to log out first. I need to well, log you do? out. I, I don't think I saved that password. Let me, um, <laughs> let me, it should, it should be stored in here as, uh, one of the passwords that I just created. So give me just a second. All right. Um, here and then nope it definitely did not all right we're going to create a new one <laughs> <laughs> so uh this time i'm going to use one that i can remember and so we'll do a json plus manual two at uh learn with json dot dev and this time we're going to give it a very very good password um so we can we can continue here uh i gotta turn that off demo accounts <laughs> um okay then we can do once this shows up okay so we're coming back I have accepted and now there it is. Yeah, it should be there. Yeah. Cause sign in is essentially logging in as, as well. So yes. And so if I log out and then we'll log back in as Now I go to my profile and it's still there. Okay. So this is, I mean, this is really cool. Like obviously we're, we're kind of like contriving examples here, but I feel like this is, this is such a, um, a, like a clear demonstration of what this starts to open up because if this is in my token, right, this is, this is what's being sent then we can start to put some stuff together. Like when you log into the dashboard, for example, um, we can start doing things like uh, we could like, well, actually, let me ask you a question. So if I want to have somebody do a, like, can I, is there a machine to machine? Does this mean that I can do something custom or like what, how do I, how would I do this? Uh, like trigger one of these, from my app if I had say uh, a area that like if as they activate new features on their on their dashboard mm -hmm. I want to say add a, a piece of metadata to their their token um, is there a, is there an easy way to do that sort of thing or or kind of how I guess maybe I'm just kind of spinning up a, an example here that doesn't need to be spun up what would you what else could could we use this for Uh, I mean, the the use cases are pretty vast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> are you talking about like this particular the ID token thing? Uh, I mean, I'm just kind of like I'm my wheels are spinning now, and I'm I'm uh, I'm just trying to kind of imagine like how other people are using these things. What what else exists that's using this this setup in the world? And the, I'm saying like actions are the the ID token thing in particular. Uh, I mean, why don't we broaden out to actions? Like what, what are, okay. what have you seen people using these for? Um, so a lot of the things that, uh, I see people use is, um, being able to like hook up with like other types of authentication, uh, mm -hmm. services. So like, for example, I don't know for like, you know, people are into crypto and I'm like, so regret these decisions now but um um there was like there's like certain services where you can like upload a picture of your driver license 
um, and use that to like verify your identity. There's like a service who verifies that those credentials are valid. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But, you know, Auth0 doesn't offer something like that. So you can connect that to if you need that, like, you know, you might be a government application or banking or something. Um, you can hook that up with the action to, you know, redirect to um, upload, upload those pictures and, you know, get their identity verified that way. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Some so some really really cool ideas here. Uh, Corey is in the chat asking about uh, progressive profiling. So yeah, that, so this is actually a question that that I do think is worth asking. If I have in my application a need to update my my users' metadata, um, mm -hmm. I think we're outside of actions at that point because it wouldn't be based on an auth zero action like a login or logout. Is there an API that I can use to update the user's metadata within my code that I could then, um, you know, add a, a login flow to to update their metadata based on, or to update their their claims? Sorry. Um, I, to be honest with you, I don't know off the top of my head. I I do know that um, you can like add information from like a third party or somewhere else uh, with it. Um, yeah, I was going to say the management API, Corey, but I wasn't sure. So thanks for that. I didn't want to say it and it was wrong. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, so that's great. I mean, we can, so we can grab an API, uh, and if somebody say activates a new feature, then I can go turn on that, the metadata for like which features they have, or if they have a subscription, we can modify their subscription level. Um, and put that right into the token, which makes it so much easier because that information about what they're allowed to access, the, the roles they have and, and those sorts of things, those become part of the user token. It's no longer get the token, then make a request to the database and then get back the information. You can, you can kind of plug it all together. To yeah, me, yeah. That, that feels... I, it just it feels less likely for me to to experience a lot of pain <laughs> as I am trying to make this happen. Um, so I see you just dropped a link in the chat, so I'm gonna pull this up for a second. Um, and so yeah, this will this will give us the ability to got client grants. Uh, we can mess with the users, and I want to update a user. And there we go. We can we can now update like app metadata and all these pieces, user metadata, um, and that's being done through an API. So that's that's really slick. I'm gonna drop this link again because it goes into my, I have a little link tracker system. All right. Um, yeah, that's, yes, exactly. So Corey's saying then once we've, once we've used this API to update their metadata, then the, the actions would come back to, um, like we would just build another one of, of these over here. Not that one. This one. Uh, we would build another one of these to check that metadata that we'd set and we could add more custom claims, which would allow us to then modify the UI based on the, the user token. So this is really, really cool stuff. Um, I, I feel like this opens up a ton of just great workflows that don't require me to reinvent a bunch of wheels in my own software. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm laughing at this. What Corey said in the chat said inner Serena was on this late on the library book or a bureau payment. Oh yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's, but that, what a good point. Like you could, you could add something like as part of their, their login, right? So we go in, we go into the login and their flow could be like, First one could be check bill status, and then we could update mm. their their metadata. Or I guess we could do it all in the same the same action. But we can yeah. Check that's another their... thing. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah. Also, another thing. So you can have multiple actions uh, in here, right? So it doesn't have to be just one. You can they recommend like one to three tops just for speed purposes, but you can add like you know, up to 20. Again, wouldn't recommend it, but it doesn't have to be just one action in here. Mm -hmm. And they will, of course, fire in the order that you uh, put them in from top to bottom. Yeah. So we could do some, we could do some pretty cool stuff here where, you know, and, and so because we have the ability to, um, to add external libraries and all that good stuff, we can, we can do something like, um, 
let's update based on taco metadata. What if we go in here and let's just add node fetch um, and we can, wait, is that done? That's there. So then we can yeah. do something like get uh, fetch. We can get fetch out of node fetch. And then in here we can, I don't know, we'll, we'll get the uh, data equals await fetch. Um, schedule and then we can do a then res right and so what I've what I'm doing here is um, we're just grabbing out these these pieces and so I can actually just even get like next episode um, and then we can do something like if I can remember how this API works which I'm going to just open it and look before I break something first episode so we'll be able to do like next episode dot title right and so we can do one of these and say set custom claim next episode and then we can do uh, next episode dot title right and so now if I deploy this I can come out here I can log out log in again and this is going to be manual two nope and we can do super secret one two three get that right yes continue no what did i do wrong to a dynamic import which is a oh oh no Making my life hard. This is going to fail, isn't it? <laughs> is that going to work? Try again. If I just refresh, does that work? Nope. Okay, so we'll go back to here. Log in one more time. Debugging on the fly. Cannot use import statement outside of a module. Yeah. Great, I'm giving up. Um, but it's a great yeah, idea I'm... in theory. <laughs> 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 Uh, but so so what that would let us do it once I once I debugged the node fetch stuff I think I'd have to go to node fetch a previous version because um, they went to es es modules um, mm -hmm. and so that is all fine it would uh, it would give us the the ability um, but yeah so I think yeah I think what we would need to do Corey just to save you the uh, common js I think it's like node fetch oh now there's just a node fetch common js that we could use so um anyways the the catch is that we've got cjs exports and then it's trying to do es modules imports or um the module itself is is es modules and this is like the forever problem of changing package <laughs> formats is uh everybody's got to use the same one um, yeah, Brian Robinson said uh, he hit that so much he switched back to Axios. Yeah, you see in the examples that I've seen, people use Axios to to fetch external uh, mm -hmm. data. Yeah, well, and the the nice thing is, is once um, you know, once we hit Node eighteen, the fetch API is built in, so you don't need Axios or Node Fetch or any of those. It just kind of it's a thing you can just use now. So um, I'm just kind of waiting for the day that uh, that everybody's using Node 18 by default, <laughs> and that's going to be a great day. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Okay, so we have about 10 minutes left. Was there anything else that you wanted to show off or talk about before we run out of time? Uh, there's nothing else that I want to uh, uh, show off. Like I said, I wanted to try to keep it light and stay away from like adding libraries and stuff today. Just kind of give like a fun intro, I guess, to action. Mm -hmm. um, but for um, to like, you know, learn more and learn more like some of the other features I am, uh, like I said, working on an egghead course for actions that should be out sometime uh, Q1. Um, right. so and people should the, follow you on Twitter to, to get that. Yeah. To get the an, an announcements and whatnot. Great, great, great. Um, 
What about you mentioned that there was a, a marketplace where I could see other people's actions. Where where do I look at that? Um, I would say go to the marketplace dot off zero dot com, of course. Uh, then scroll down and then click actions under features. Ah, uh, cool. Okay. So under actions, we've got the ability to, let's see, verify age, country based access control. That's kind of cool. Oh, um, that, you know what? Yeah. Let's, uh, let's show that off. I can show you how to do a, a drag and drop action. So you could just go back to the dashboard, probably the, cause you can do, you don't even have to go here. I, I forgot about that. So yeah. Uh, all right, action. So let's let's do login. Okay. And then, um, we got the uh, create one. So go to custom. Do I need to install an action? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm tripping. Yeah, install action. See you. Uh, and then you I know can grab I, one you know of what these. you're doing. <laughs> yeah, and then so the, the country based access. <laughs> uh country based access was up here somewhere here. Yeah. All right. All right. Um and then click add integration. Then it should have you fill out some or you can accept permissions. Okay, that all makes sense. Continue. I'm gonna continue. Yeah. Country codes we'll do to US. Block. Yeah, we'll put in US so it tells me to go away. I don't know what the uh, sanctioned under U.S. export controls. Oh, okay. So, like, if we had a an e-commerce store, we we can't legally sell to countries that are sanctioned, right? So we can just hit that bot yeah. that button to to not have to do it. Um, and yeah. then, all right. <laughs> so now, what should happen? Get out, is Yankee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to create that. And now we've got country-based access. So if I go back to my flow, mm -hmm. I go to my login, mm -hmm. I can just drop this right in the in the chart. And so mm -hmm. now what we should see, right, is and as soon as apply. I go over here, it should bounce me, right? You got to click apply first. Oh, oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I forget that too. I literally forgot when I was recording the lesson. Oh, <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, so I am I am not logged in. Uh, I'm going to log in now. Boom. There we go. It's like, now nah, you can't come in. And then if I, uh, I'll get rid of this one, apply, mm -hmm. go back to localhost 3000, and log in again. And don't know which account I'm logging in with right now, but... <laughs> okay and now it lets me back in so yep. um and their you know our action is still working and all that good stuff that's i mean that's pretty cool stuff and i love that i didn't have to think about it at all i just i just configured it the way that i would want it configured um mm -hmm. that's really handy so this is, yeah, this is pretty excellent. And then I've got my um, installed ones here. And if I ever want to update that config, I can come back in here mm -hmm. and get rid of that or whatever. Um, pretty cool stuff. And with that, uh, where would somebody go if they wanted to? Okay, actually, let me really quickly make sure I link to this. Um, it was here, here do a link to the marketplace for actions if folks want to check those out. Uh, what about documentation? Is there a, a place somebody should go if they want to build their own uh, their own integrations? Uh, yeah, I can, uh, it's be offzero.com doc slash customize slash actions. And I can drop the link uh, in the chat down you faster than me. Boom. Oh, you have them. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, that's the doc. That's the, like the docs for actions. <clears throat> there we go. All right. So docs for actions. And with that, Will, I think we can call this one a, a resounding success. We were able to build out uh, very quickly 
the ability to um, build custom flows. So we we built out the ability to rickroll people. Uh, so redirect based on on who's coming <laughs> in. Um, we can add custom user metadata, and we could do that. Like we did it manually, but you could do that based on what country they're coming from, what uh, what their status is. Uh, like Corey was saying, we could look at a database and see what their their account status is. Are they overdue on anything? And then we could add that metadata. Um, and then we wrote an, an action that lets us actually update their user claims based on their user metadata so that we can provide actual information in the user token that the app receives. Um, we also yeah, looked yeah. at how we can use this marketplace to get a bunch of pre-made actions already for us. Um, Will, anything else you want to add before I, before I take us home? Uh, you know, if you have any questions about actions, like actions is kind of like my favorite thing with, uh, you know, off zero. So if you have any questions about actions or you made a cool, if you made a cool action, please show me so I can get that over to the actions team. They love to see, uh, their work in the wild. But yeah, just hit me up on Twitter if you have any questions and uh, about even not even necessarily about actions, even if it's off zero in general, because a lot of times, even if, you know, I've been here for like a year and someone may not ask me, may ask something that I'm not particularly sure of because I haven't like run across it. It always, you know, deepens my knowledge of the product or an identity topic. So I welcome all the questions. So let me know. Absolutely. All right. So on that note, we are going to uh, do the do the round. So we have had white coat captioning. Ashley's been with us all day doing the captioning. That is now available in Twitch itself. Just click that closed caption button, and it's always available on the homepage as well. Uh, that is made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify, NX, and New Relic. All kicking in to make this show more accessible to more people, which I very much appreciate. Uh, while you are checking out the site, make sure you head over to the schedule page and... Uh, and you know, see what's coming. We've got a whole bunch of fun stuff. Uh, most notably, I uh, let's see. I'm going to be out on Thursday. I'm I'm going to be out of town, and then next Tuesday, I'm going to do uh, a solo show. So um, I will be on. I probably just keep working on on the Learn with Jason Mono Repo switch. Uh, we've got Dominic coming to talk about Tanstack Query V4. This is the framework agnostic evolution of react query it's a really cool library uh dominic and i talked a little bit about what it can do super excited about this it's going to be a great episode um we're going to be building custom developer training quests we're going to learn about nux3 and nitro we are going to build a docusaurus site we are going to do component driven dev with faker <sighs> there's so much coming y'all it's going to be great um i think will we can let you go thank you so much for hanging out with us today this was an absolute blast yeah, thanks for having me. I had fun. All right. With that, we're going to call this one done, y'all. We will see you all next time.